All right, everyone, this is Living Your Dreams Part 2. And as you might recall, I had a Living Your Dreams Part 1, which was um, recorded back in August of 2013. I think it was August or September of 2013. I think it was August with Jason. And uh, that was uh, recorded at a McDonald's. And we're here at a Starbucks. And I'm here with Dr. Experience, a very special guest who's been helping with the recordings. He wants to allow you to benefit from his experience and wisdom, and he's very interested in your feedback, right? Any feedback Correct. that you could give. So in this one, I asked him because Jason and I have not done part two yet. It's called Living Your Dreams Part Two. So I will also I will explain, too, where I've come with one of the dreams that I mentioned in that original recording and what the next steps are, but I'm more interested in what your thoughts are, Dr. Experience. Dr. Experience, why is it that some people live their dreams and some people don't? Because this was a topic we spent 20 minutes or so talking about the other, in the other clip. And I talked about the Hollywood, one of the Hollywood actor friends, or the ones that I knew, and he was an acquaintance. But I have a really good friend that I knew from high school who's also at Hollywood. Uh, now and what, why is it that some people fill their dreams with passion and, and go give it everything they have and other people don't? I, I have my observations and personal experiences, but I'm more interested in what your thoughts are. Well, I think there's a lot of things. I think there's like the uh, if you're not a confident person, you're afraid of failure. You fear the consequences of maybe leaving your current career or job to pursue something else. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of factors involved. Uh, basically, do you feel you have the ability to do something else? Are you too comfortable in your setting? Uh, I know people that don't even like to travel because they don't like to leave their hometown. Well, I have a lot of people that I've known like that. There's, and a, com that do. there's a comfort level there. So you have to go out of your comfort zone. But they don't have to. Okay, those people are okay doing it. Some people are totally content with it. Right. I mean, and a, a, and a lot of it comes down to pure laziness. But how is that tied into living your dream? So, for example, if you want to have a family, right. you want to have the 9-to-5 job, and you want to stay in your hometown with your network, how is that not living your dream? Now, if that's your dream, fine. But what you're speaking of is somebody who's pursuing a career in music or acting or an athletic or anything. Anything. You have to go out your side your comfort level. And you have to work hard at it. I mean, look what you've done at the gym. Oh, thank you. And do you want to fill everybody in? What happened? Well, you you came into the gym probably before I knew you and basically wanted to rebuild your body which you did and you're in the process of lose body fat but initially you probably didn't think you were going to achieve what you achieved now did you i kind of what i did is i operated in faith and he's referring to the body transformation competition in early august that i signed up for one of the um trainers there who later became my trainer during that session um a gal by the name of amanda she encouraged me and she what helped was that she believed that I could do it. I, I didn't know what was going to happen because I'd never done anything like mm -hmm. it. I'd never done any kind of body transformation. The only thing that I could compare it to was in high school where I had a very strict diet. Or not high school, it was college. And I trained really hard with a friend and I did have the muscular definition, very ripped. But at that time I was 125 pounds. Really at my leanest I swam lifted weights, walked around, I didn't have a car. Oh, I did have it, but we didn't have, we weren't able to park on campus. Um, and what was amazing was I got really lean and ripped, but now we're talking about, I have about 20 more pounds of muscle, mm -hmm. um, definitely more fit, better endurance. And my point is that that leads to um, You're a lot more confident. More confident, and the, living the dream is that I wanted to see if the winning was possible. I came in second out of 46. It, coincidentally enough, about a month into it, I was ranked number two. So it didn't, I don't know if it went up or down, but he beat me by 3%. Sure. And uh, the body transformation pictures, as you said, they look very effective. So I set out to achieve the goal, but why I did that was I wanted to use that success formula with the group support and the philosophy. Mm -hmm. If I could do something else in music or something else, mm -hmm. and the answer is yes. That if anything that you want to do, and that you could use the success in one area, of your life to capitalize in another area. And I think it's another so key is 
trying to be successful, you have to be patient. It's not going to happen overnight. It's Why not. Is it? it just takes time. It takes time for anything. It's just the way life is. Now, occasionally, somebody gets a break, meets the right person, the right connection, and they get to the top fast. Just like you were talking about musicians, actors, they get their big break, right? Yeah, you did, have you noticed this, Dr. Experience? I want to quickly jump in and uh, share something about that. I've seen, like, I had a friend who was on the Ellen DeGeneres show. I mean, I don't know him. He's more like an acquaintance. Mm -hmm. But even before he was on the show, I had asked for autographed CDs. I knew that something was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, he got on to that show. When, I think he's one of the only unsigned artists to ever get on. And uh, he has, to this day, about 7,000 views over a five-year period, which is pretty impressive. But he didn't get the break he was looking for. Now, he'd already been in Hollywood, he'd already played, been to Hollywood, he'd already recorded out there. He played in festivals, and I had a situation much my, you know, I was on TV in Brazil in a reggae band. I um, performed with one. I, um, I also registered the song book there. Um, what else did I do? There's something I wanted to share with you. I was on a carnival cruise with my folks. My dad and my stepmom and uh, two stepbrothers. And what had happened was, this is back in 2007. I did stay in alive, and wow. the the show host had sang uh, had sung um, "Let It Be" or no, not "Let It Be." Uh, hey dude, and I had already picked that song, but they had selected me on my falsettos and my "Stay in Alive" song. 2,000 people were there, and they only selected six singers out of everyone that sang. They had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of singers, but I was one of the six. But it didn't lead to anything. It was on DVD. I have the DVD. Mm -hmm. But you got to be careful of thinking that one opportunity is going to be the make or break. I never. I agree that you know how Eminem sings, uh, "Don't miss your shot." You know, you only have that one shot. And by the way, I recorded for one of his producers, but that's another story. Got fifty dollars for two hours. A uh, one in Northwest Indiana came to me in guitar center and heard me playing and wanted to help. But my point is that the opportunity is that by not having a narrow uh, focus on it, it helps. But I've also seen the situation where you got to have the laser-like focus. So so you don't want to procrastinate, yet you've got to make some inroads. There has to be some sort of... But why is it that some people you hear of and never, to others you don't? I mean, that's the thing I'm... You know what I mean? Have you yeah. seen people, friends sure. of yours, that have buried dreams and others that live their dreams? Or is sure. it so black and white? Do we have shades of gray, or maybe I tasted this, I don't want it anymore, or do I? Well, it's like, think of all the talented musicians are out there that have never made it big. And a lot of it has to come down to maybe they didn't have the right connection, the right song. Look at some of the great singers. They had great songwriters behind them. What made the Beatles great? Not that they were great musicians, which they were, but they could write great songs, too. Oh, they were amazing. Yeah. They were amazing. It was amazing what those four could do. And just like in, uh, you take golf, professional golf, there's a lot of really good players, but only so many achieve the top tournaments, the majors. So, th so this is what I've also noticed, Dr. Experience, and I've kind of debated my father on this. Um, if someone wants to be an actor, and I'm going to be teaching acting students coming up here, uh, but I'm going to be teaching sociology to them, uh, among, you know, the that's going to be in a live situation. But what's interesting is, I believe there's a role in the industry that you want to be in for everyone. Now, what I mean is, you've got to position yourself. Sure. For example, in the same way we're positioned in this coffee shop doing this recording, there's room for everybody else. Sure. You know, Gandhi once said, there's room, you'll find that there's room for us all. So I think part of the strategy of living your dreams is to ride the wave of where it takes you and to be willing to risk. So, but not to risk where you you don't have to lose everything. And at the same time, everything. you know, I always say, people say I want to be happy. I say, don't use the word happy. Use the word content. Be content of what you achieve. Maybe you didn't reach the highest peak in that profession, but be content with what you have. And you can and do enjoy it in some form of yeah. I think the key to getting to the top of anything is enjoying it on the way up. So how do you know how high you can go on something? For example, with music, I believe, or acting or anything, like going on the auditions, like my friend who's a Hollywood actor, so he's been on these TV shows, I said, you should be really proud of yourself. And he says, yes, I would like to have better roles. And I'm sure that's coming. 
So there's this idea that he has to have other work. He's going into real estate and other things because the acting isn't paying the bills. Sure. So my question is, can you find satisfaction? They say sometimes your your dream is... It isn't going to pay the bills. Yeah, and it doesn't have to initially, or it doesn't have to... They've been, right. Different people say it doesn't have to ever, but does that mean that you're not applying yourself wholeheartedly? No, because... A lot of things that are going to make you happy and what you achieve aren't going to pay the big bucks. So what do you recommend for everyone out there that's like maybe puzzled? Maybe they're pursuing a career and they want How many of us really get to do a profession we really love? Not many of us do. Well, I'm teaching. I love it. You love it. I would You're... not quit even if I became a billionaire, yeah. you know, right. like from, from music or whatever. Right. I wouldn't, you know. I wouldn't quit teaching. Right. That's a rarity. A lot of people just have a job to survive economically. Well, Amy Wozniacki says in her occupational viewing model, it's called the occupational viewing model. You have a job to survive, career to advance and go in, and then a calling. The calling is the thing that is tugging at your heartstrings. You have to do it before you die. You got to do it. So, what I mean, what are your thoughts? Do you have? Do you think people have this? If you, if you don't have a lot of life experience, can you can somebody be 18 years old and know this is what they want? I've seen people do it. Like, do that, right? I've seen people do it. And I've a lot of youngsters in their 20s. Or I don't want to say that that youngsters, but I'm just saying that they don't know that um, what they want to do because they don't have the life experience to do. Sure, right? Sure. You know. So how do you how do you clarify? You've got a lot of opportunities, a lot of things to do. I think you become more balanced. You try a lot of things. Morris, don't set your sights on one thing. I mean, if you really know what you want to do, work hard at it. But basically, have balance in life. Try a lot of different things. Just like we talked earlier about meeting different people. Don't limit yourself to just a small group of friends. Go outside that group. Try different things. You know, how many times have you tried something? You said, man, I never thought I'd enjoy doing this so much until I did. You never thought you'd enjoy being in the gym so much, did you? No, I, I did. <laughs> did you? Okay. It was actually my dream when I had been doing all these seminars. Um, you know, I did all these seminars throughout the day for, one, you know, different classes. Uh, I left that position earlier this year to focus on, part of the reason was to be able to sleep seven to eight hours a day. It was a dream of mine to sleep normal hours again, and then to train for two to three hours. I ended up training two to four hours. Now I'm doing 90 minutes, and tomorrow I'm going to do two to three hours. Um, but my point is, it was a dream because I wanted to do it. Like, I think you don't have to know, like, I didn't, when I trained at that high level, I mean, I pushed myself to a higher level because of competition, but I was already doing it. Right. So the idea can happen if you're already going towards something. Mm -hmm. Like, you didn't know that, oh, this is going to lead to this. When I started playing guitar, I didn't know that that would lead to blues guitar. Initially, I was songwriting, then I had this blues, blues guitar phase. Um, cool, I played in Brazil with a band. I learned 15 songs in one night wow. because it was a, it was it, and we played in the shopping plaza. I had the recording. I still have the tape somewhere. Um, and what's interesting is, then I had um, the the interesting thing was then that led to something else. Like later on in California, I was on stage at an open mic, and there was a blues guy like a giant from the area, and he watched me and another guy, and I had my dress shirt on, and I had my one guitar that I had and I played and I looked at the other guy and we played. It was a dream. It was a dream that I was living. But what happened was then it shifted to songwriting. I got into the reggae and um, and then I registered the songbook in 2002 and now there's this natural evolution to where I don't want to have to be just a music. Like it's going to be one song. It's like a tapestry. You're, you're, see, I believe your dream changes and I hit on this before. Your dream changes. So you mentioned you're in your 50s. I'm in my late 30s. So. Where I'm going to be in 10 years, where you're going to be in 10 years, is different from where we are now because your dream is going to change with your life experiences. So we've got to get a move on. Because we've got to get a move on for the dream. That's true, because things you love to do when you were younger, you've lost the passion for. Why do, well, well, how do you know if you still want to revisit it? Why is the passion gone in certain cases? In certain cases, it's not. I don't believe it's always gone. Why? Uh, so if you talk to a lot of people that have done the same thing for 30, 40 years, whether it's a activity or a job, they've lost their passion for it. They need something new to revitalize them. Why do they need something new? Because they're bored with it. It's not motivating them. It's not challenging them anymore. Same thing in a relationship. Why do relationships die out? 
So you need to always, that's why it's good to be balanced and have a lot of different things you like to do. Because if you're tired of one after a while, you go back to the other one. And you're always looking for something new to do. That's why when you travel, maybe not go back. You know, we all have a habit of going back to the same places we really like. Right. But it's amazing if you broaden your horizons and travel somewhere like, man, I'm glad I came here. Well, this is where I agree and I want to add something to it. I believe what I'm noticing as you become aware, and I talk about this in different psychology courses, there's a developmental psych course where I've talked about this, that um, you've also talked about this, that the number of years, and my father has also, the number of years as you get to get approach middle age or in, or in middle age, you start realizing you don't want to fritter around with your time. So, so in other words, you have certain non-negotiables in your life, so you could be open to new experiences. If you don't see how they relate, then I understand maybe the universe is trying to tell you something. But you should also feel it in your heart, that connection. You should be open yet. There should be that divine intuition kind of intuition guiding you and pulling you like you know if it feels right. Yeah, because see what I'm noticing is you could still spin your wheel and then the work still has to be done. Sure. So, for example, if you know there's certain things that need to be done, yes, I've heard it said, and Joel Osteen talks about this on his broadcast, which I love, by the way, on Sirius, I think it's 128 or 129. And I listen to him every day, and he talks about this idea that God can get you from A to B like that. And I agree. Sure. However, you still need the preparation. The bodybuilding, the, the transformation competition sure. took 90 days of hard work. I sure. couldn't get around the hard work. Sure. Dr. Phil but always says that you can't replace the hard work. Because it's more gratifying if you had to work hard to get it. You no, know, how would I win it? How would I win it in one day? Like you right, you could. Yeah. More or less, if something come, isn't it more gratifying to accomplish something if it was more of a challenge and harder on you? Yes, if, but it, if it was just easy, you take it for granted. But then what do people do? They don't get started. They don't get started because they want it to be easy and they're not motivated. But why does the passion fizzle if it's not that? If that's not the reason. Well, I just feel there's a lot of people out there that aren't passionate about too much of anything. Why not? Because I think it's this day of uh, entitlement. You know, everybody wants everything now. Easy. But how do you find your passion? I have a lot of students asking me, a lot of people say, I don't know what I'm interested in. I'll tell you what it is for me. Your thoughts get dominated by it. Your soul kind of... Yeah. Like, in other words, people don't. some people don't have experiences, but the more experiences you have, especially in the exploratory moratorium, moratorium phase, maybe going in line with what you were talking about earlier, to get experiences that you might be interested yeah. in. I also noticed that what you focus in on tends to lead to, oh, sure. it, it constantly, like the reticular activating system in your brain stems, which is responsible for goal setting, energy arousal, and sleep helps you to organize it. Like, I could care less about any advancements in math. Mm -hmm. Like, it'd be nice, but I could find, like, a magazine on mathematics. But I, I'm not interested in that. You tend to notice what you're interested in, and that comes from your life experiences and conditioning, but also the soul, I think, kind of... I think when you go after your passion, you can't worry about what other people think. You can't worry if it's going to make you a lot of money. you got to do it. you got to do it. Why you got to love to do it. you got to have that passion. There'll be the regret for not doing it. For not doing it, yeah. Isn't that right? Like, have you, do you have friends like that that maybe pursue whatever it is? Like, you're successful in your business in that position that you're in. And you did it because you were passionate. That's why you stayed youthful, energetic. Sure. Because like, people that work with me that I train, they say, man, you're really passionate about your work. You're really positive. You're really upbeat. Right. You know. But that comes, if you hated your job, you still would have found the right attitude. Yeah, if you're, even if you're having a bad day, you have to stay passionate. Yes. It's not like a prison sentence. Like, no. you know, people should be grateful for being employed or whatever the situation, you know, even on the search. You know, the mind is stronger than the body. If you can convince your mind, if you can have a positive attitude, you can achieve anything. So would you agree that with the positive attitude, then you realize how they say that the universe is working for you? Yes. That I've even found that opportunities have come in, like, I just had an opportunity recently, and I know we're going to get to our health and fitness clip in a moment. Um, I had a situation where I told you earlier today, I got a contact, reached out to me, he said, he said, Sanjay, would you be interested? And I'm actually going to be responding. I told you about that. Mm -hmm. A radio show attached to a newspaper, one million listeners. Wow. Just like that. And and he asked me, would you be, would that be something you're interested in? 
I didn't I didn't do a radio show before. So yeah. I have I've actually funny thing in high school. I did a film camp, radio and TV camp. So I did sure. broadcasting, but it's a workshop. But it's funny how the universe prepares. You. Like I was pre med, but now I'm teaching nursing students in one capacity. And I'm set. Your life sets you up for the See, experiences, and it, it kind of there's an unfold. We're not afraid to venture out and try something different. It's, yeah, I can do it. You can do it. See, a lot of people, like I said earlier, they're afraid of failing. They're like, oh, I can't do this. It's going to take too much effort. You know, how do I go about it? That goes back to networking. If you really want to do something, maybe you don't have an idea how you're going to get to point A to B. But be you open to the possibility that it can be done. It can be done, right. And that but, you make time for but it. But you're going to have to take that initial time to research it, find connections, and motivate yourself to do it. And just take action. Just take action. All because right. Because it's too easy just to go home, turn on the TV, they say, oh, I'll do it another day, or I think about it another day. And you know what? The next day goes by, the next day goes by. Never happens. And you asked me a question earlier. The young people want to know how to find their passion in life. I mean, that's a tough question. How do you find what's your real real passion, what you really love to do, you know? And that's, I mean, that goes back to balance, trying different things. But understand if you're in school and you're spending money, you're spending money to try to educate yourself toward a certain profession. But you want to make sure that's the right thing. You know what I've noticed is that whatever at that point is where you are. Like Oprah says, you're doing the best that you can at that time. A at lot of psychotherapists time. say it. Well, you speaking do. of Oprah, look how many breaks she's given people. Amazing. But, I mean, Dr. Phil. Rachel uh, Ray. Rachel Ray. Dr. I mean, Oz. yes. I mean, there, that's what you call connect. And that, King. You, you talk about Ellen bringing on that musician. Those are people at the top that are willing to reach out and help people. Yeah, but but that the sustaining power has to. You can't. You, there's a lot of hard work that Brian Tracy yeah, talks they about. Can, they, a lot of people don't see. They can you know? open that door for you, but you got to do the work. You got to do the work, and then I've learned that you got to sustain the uh, audience base. Yeah. So if you show up, it took 150 thousand people to get him on that show mm -hmm. through our website. They said, "Oh, he should be on there. We want to see him." Yeah. But people saw him live. Right. A lot of people saw the, the show, but then only 7,000 found them on sure. YouTube because they, they've already done, they've seen it, or maybe, like, I bought the CDs, who was gracious enough to autograph them, very personable, but um, you've got to sustain your base. I'm sure, I'm sure he has a base, but the, the longevity of someone's career right. is, um, is from their ability to network, uh, convince, I, I don't want to say convince others of their passion, but connect with their passion sure. so that they can keep going. And how many times have you heard the saying, getting to the top to the top's hard or achieving your goal, but staying at the top's even harder because you have to maintain. You gotta maintain and change and evolve, but not sell out. My dad told me some years ago when he was in his sixties, he lived till he's mid seventies, he said people sh things are backward in life. People should have their money and their wealth when they're younger and feel like doing all the things and passionate about things when they have their families. When you get older, seniors tend to have more money because they've, they've built the wealth up over the years. But a lot of times they've lost the passion, their, their health's not good, the kids are already grown, things are backwards. Well, this is interesting you said that. My dad and a family friend said that years ago, that you should be doing these things now. Yes. And you, they said you can always work as you get older. <laughs> it's kind of funny that they said that, but why you're able-bodied, and who says that you're not going to be able well, well, how many men have said on their deathbed, I wanted to work more? No. Wayne Dyer says in the five, yes, there's a book that he recommends, uh, The Five Regrets of the Dying, and I met him at three, I heard him speak at three seminars in Toronto, Tampa, and Pasadena, and he said that, you're right, they never say that. And he says that they're willing to, they, they wish that they had the courage. He, he, he recommends that book, I'm not sure who the author is, but he says that people will, um, you know, I saw him at three, I spoke to him at two, I just kind of met him. Uh, he says that people are, they, they're afraid, like they don't live up to that. Expectation. They never reach your expectation because you're afraid. My dad told me when he started business in his 50s, he said, I wish I'd done it years earlier. But he has that but I had the now. But I had the responsibility of the family. And there was always, even though I knew I was good, there was a little bit of that factor, maybe I won't be able to do it. And it's going to burden my family financially. Finding a way to do it or 
creating a sideline to make sure these things happen can be very helpful. Yes. All right, I want to thank Dr. Experience. They're getting ready to close up here. So um, we hope you enjoyed this video clip. Let's give everyone that's watching this round of applause and you'd like to see their comments, right? Maybe oh, definitely. That their feedback so we can help them. Yes. Because and it's, uh, it's a crazy world out there, isn't it? Yes, it's and it is. It's complicated. Fast-paced. And there's a lot of people with questions and just need good common sense. And you know what? It'll be fun because later on I'm going to post music videos. I already started towards the direction I told you. One of the other things I quickly mentioned that I said I was going to do was to let you know where I was coming along with it. Um, I recorded, I put three rough drafts of my songs for somebody who wanted to see them. So they're already starting to get views. And one person who had some sort of contact with songwriting competitions told me to send one of the songs in, which I got to record. Um, and then there's next year I'm going to do, next one to two years I'm going to be recording them. I've already started assembling what I need and I'm mapping out the plan. So I'm, I'm creating the strategy, but hopefully that inspires you as well. So check those out. Thank you again, Dr. Experience. You. As you know, you're an inspiration to me and everybody else watching. And we want to thank you all here.